Good morning. We are at a new trailhead today. Um, we are going to be going out, hopefully huckleberry picking. And I set a goal to fill this bucket because I think that'll get us two one gallon bags. Um, we don't know if the huckleberries are there. Just had a really good bacon breakfast burrito that Jess made us. She's doing some dishes right now. Yep, cleaning up. And if the huckleberries aren't there, there are hot springs, so we'll be fine. So I was just looking at the bucket again. It's pretty massive, so I don't think we need to fill it up all the way. We're gonna shoot for a goal of 25% full. Still the equivalent, hopefully, of two one-gallon Ziploc bags. So we saw some interesting things up here in Idaho today. Uh, two folks came walking out of the trail with a, would you call it a wagon? Yeah, like the, a collapsible wagon. Collapsible like wagon one. with their full-on... Uh, <laughs> like airplane luggage? Yeah, luggage, suitcases, suitcases everything. And, you know, the hot spring, I think, is a mile in on a dirt path. And we're about think, 40 miles from anything, yet there's a random cruiser bike locked up here. Beach cruiser. Beach cruiser, yeah. We've got beach cruiser here in Idaho. Uh, I would assume that person was camping somewhere nearby. But the reason I turned this thing on is because these bridges... To access the wilderness over here are pretty awesome. There's several of them up and down this road and they're very well maintained and high quality builds. Uh, and they bounce a little bit. So it's really neat that they built these so that you can cross the river to get to some really cool places. Otherwise it kind of would be a All right, well we weren't sure if there were gonna be huckleberries yeah. here because they've been pretty scarce. But they're here. This yeah. Is a whole patch of them. Uh, we got about 10 feet into the trail. The bridge is still there. So it's picking time. So we made it to the hot springs. We got how many berries? Oh. We don't have a ton yet. We're gonna do more on the way out. Uh, but I don't even know. I can't see what I'm looking at. Yeah. I Looks like we can see in there. A decent bit. Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, last time we were up here, the river had washed out the spring and we had no idea that there's this one. And we were told there's another one 300 yards up into the woods. So we're gonna go take a peek at that and then we're gonna take a quick soak because there's no shade and it's pretty warm. We made it back to the car but uh, what did we do, a two mile round trip hike? It probably ended up taking us, I don't know, four hours at least. Uh, but you know you had decent huckleberry picking when your hands are turned purpley. And Jess is currently giving them a wash. Let's see how many got. Looks like we did all right. All right, so we're leaving Jerry Johnson Hot Springs. We did a bunch of huckleberry picking. And we are now headed towards Missoula, Montana. Trying to figure out where we're gonna camp tonight. But yeah, we're hoping for Riverside Camp here shortly. Hey everybody, it is Monday morning. We're outside of Troy, Montana. We're gonna go see some giant cedar trees. Uh, just woke up and wanted to show you what uh, the reality of van life is. This place is a mess, the van that is. We've been fishing, so all this 
junk's out. Got a uh, pile of clothes here. Uh, waders and fishing poles on the bed. Got some other pile on the bed. This is the, the kitchenette. This has got stuff everywhere. Uh, motorcycle helmet and dry bag where all the fishing stuff goes. More fishing stuff. We got a t-shirt on the back of the seat because I fell in the river yesterday. The floor. For those folks that see all those beautiful pristine vans on Instagram or other places, that's not the reality. We live in filth sometimes. We're going to clean this place up and then go see some sweet trees. We'll show you those in a few. I want to provide a little backstory on this uh, cedar grove. Do you remember what it was called? Ross Creek, I think. Ross Creek Cedar Grove. That is actually correct. I once came here about 15 years ago in the winter. And it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. We're, what, probably, I don't know, 50, 60 miles from the Canadian border. Came here in the middle of the winter. Tried snowshoeing to it because the road is closed. Never found them. Gave up. Turned around. Went back. Uh, on my way back, I saw a giant bear print in the snow that wasn't there on the way up. So then I said, that's got to be a grizzly bear print. And he shouldn't be awake right now. So if he is, I feel like he's hungry. So I really thought I was going to die 15 years ago. So anyways, last year, Jess and I got close. We were probably about 150 miles from here. Yeah. And I wanted to bring her. And we went to Glacier National Park instead. So we didn't make it. So then this year comes around. We're in Missoula, Montana again. So hopefully the cedar trees are actually worth it because we drove two and a half hours out of the way to come see them. We're going to drive another two and a half hours back. And we're going to go check out Kootenay Falls. So stay tuned on that one. Exciting day. Yeah, it is going to be an exciting day. The first one's so big it doesn't even fit in the screen. Uh, also, we got here at 8 a.m. So we're hoping we're the only people. Which, it looks like it is. Look at that. Toilets. It's such a kind place. We're pretty excited about this hike, and we're going to be looking for the flying squirrels. <laughs> you going to tell me anything you just learned? Uh, so this used to be called Lightning Creek Trail, but it's now called Ross Creek, named after a prospector in the 1920s. This trail used to be used for prospectors and trappers to enter into the woods here. Um, this is a 100 acre plot that is preserved from logging and mineral entries uh, that is basically the cedar grove. So this, uh, my, this little hiking trail that we're on is just under one mile. I'm assuming there's going to be a bunch of signs and stuff that they say to take your time and enjoy the forest. So that's what we'll do. Also, we have our bear spray and... Um, something else. Oh yeah, the trees are only 500 years old. So <laughs> can they be that big? <laughs> but there's babbling brooks everywhere. It's a unique habitat, that's what makes it special. Very unique habitat.
it's been a fairly peaceful experience out here so far. Except for the screaming kids I just heard. <laughs> it's bound to happen eventually. I didn't know what was happening. I thought there was maybe a bear attack. <laughs> just a lot of screaming happening. Yeah, that's what kids do. Oh, and we saw a flying squirrel. <laughs> Jump from one branch to the next. <laughs> yeah, like two feet. Like pretty standard squirrel. Like. <laughs> what else uh, have you enjoyed during this excursion? I don't know. Not piles of rocks, I can tell you that much. Huh. We don't like... We don't like yeah, unnatural like piles of rocks. Let's have a little educational although, moment here. <clears throat> although, most people enjoy doing this, and if it's a high use area, maybe it should be okay. But that's not natural. We just came across a person in full camo <laughs> on the side of the trail with a camera, and they we're trying to take pictures of the Pacific, Pacific Wren. Wren, which we may have just seen one. We'll have yeah, to Google it and let you know. So. <laughs> so we are now on our way to Libby, Montana. Uh, we have checked on our package and it is supposed to be delivered today. So... Libby doesn't want us. We called the FedEx uh, ship location to make sure that they receive FedEx packages because they have an interesting name. It's sh ship this, receive this, package <laughs> that, or something weird. Small town, Libby, and uh, they gave us they gave us a basically a COVID pep talk. Uh, well, our and first response was, "You can ship it to Missoula." <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want, I'm not in Missoula. Uh, actually, they shipped it to Coeur d'Alene. Oh, we okay. shipped it to Montana to avoid paying tax, though. It was an expensive item. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to Kooten. I think it's pronounced Kootenai. Yeah, I don't know. But we're going to Kootenai Falls right now. And it, oh, it's packed. Yeah. So it must be good. But we'll uh, show you what this place is all about here in yeah. a minute. There's a swinging bridge, according to this sign. We just pulled in. To the trailhead here, which I don't know if it's National Forest or not. We'll find out in a minute. But it's interesting because I don't know if you can see it, but I'm sure you can. Trailhead grill right at the beginning here. <laughs> they got ice cream and stuff. Do you got pants on? Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I might have to get some ice cream. <laughs> Ice cream for breakfast. Ice cream for breakfast. Ooh, one minute away from when we can eat too because of intermittent fasting. <laughs> All right, we have discovered that this is in the National Forest. We also found that we've been catching West Slope cutthroat trout. And so we're not quite sure why there's a little stand over here run by a high school kid. <laughs> Uh, it's about uh, half a mile down to the swinging bridge. Yeah. So we'll see how uh, that's a, a nice meandering walk. No camping in here either. <laughs> Trail update. We are now crossing the railroad tracks. Someone left a little lock of love there. This must be what birds in a zoo feel like. It's concrete, but I can feel it bouncing a little bit. Yeah, it's weird. Kind of funky. We also forgot our bear spray. I didn't forget, I just didn't think it was necessary. <laughs> I don't think it was necessary either. There's like 9,000 people on this trail. Yeah. So if you're looking for solitude. Don't come here. This might not be the place. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, but I think we found the fall. There were warning signs of don't go swimming due to undertoes and whatnot. I hope there's not people that think they can swim in this because I don't think you would I don't think you would make it
through the bridge. I've always had a slight fear of heights and it seems to be crippling me a little bit more in my older age. So we'll see uh, how this goes. She looks, oh she looks scared. She looks like I'm gonna be, this gal looks like how I'm going to look. Oh yeah. Kind of crushing so far. Probably because I'm not over the water yet. If you like get used to the rhythm, it's okay. The rhythm of the night. Is that a song? I think as long as I don't look down. To be fair, I weigh quite a bit more. So. It scares me more than you. Is that why? Yeah. That's why. I'm gonna call for the helicopter to pick me up and bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> 